about the project strategy adjustment, um, we can't ignore issues like earlier you mentioned resource allocation. Mm -hmm. So the problems of big projects are that the allocation may spend much time and energy. On the other hand, the resources of small scale projects, such as like uh, renovating a house, to some extent are limited comparing to large scale projects. So are there any differences between these two kind of projects when it comes to strategy making? I think in uh, at both extremes, from the very small to the very large very, projects, yes. all projects need a clear resourcing strategy. And let me explain what I mean by that. Um, when you plan a project, you, you start with what is the mission? What are you trying to do in business terms? Then technically, how are you going to deliver that? That's the scope. Then you break that down into manageable pieces and you end up with a number of work packages, some of which you will do internally, some of which you will outsource to the contract market. Once you know what those are, you should know what your resource requirements are. You schedule those work packages over time, so you should have a clear view of your resourcing requirements across the whole life cycle of the project from the start to the finish. Obviously, your understanding of the closer ones will be clearer than the ones further out. Five years out, it gets a bit vague. But you have a plan. And if you, once you understand at that point in time, I'm going to need those competencies, those skills, uh, and that number of people in that place, then you can have those discussions with the contract market, with your internal functions who might provide the resources. A different country, if you go into a different country, start to talk to their market about where, where those resources come from. And it doesn't matter whether it's a big project or a small one, you have to have that forward view. So you can have those discussions six months, nine months, years sometimes in advance. If you don't have that strategy, you can't have those discussions in advance. You wait till the last minute, then you say, oh, I need 100 people with those skills. Then it's too late. And then you delay the project. And you see that happening all the time. So many projects don't have that resourcing strategy. And I always say this to my students, I don't understand why, because many of them don't have resourcing strategies on their projects. Why not? It's, so, it's such an obvious thing to do and such a helpful thing to do. And yet projects don't do it. So I don't understand why. Okay, so uh, right now the Gout charts is uh, still quite popular on um, project management, right? Mm -hmm. It is, but okay. so what? Uh -huh. It's just the Gantt chart just shows you uh, the schedule over time yeah. of okay. what you're going to do. Okay. Uh, and it's a way of communicating that. It's one of those tools that was invented in 1940 something in, in, in the wartime and has, uh, it works so people use it. It's a, it's a useful tool but that doesn't help you manage the people. You know, it says at that point in time, we're going to be working on that work package. So it fits in with your resourcing strategy and all those things. It's one of those things it's you have working. to have. Okay. And it's, an, it's uh, a necessary, but uh, not okay. um, it's, sorry, it's an essential tool, okay. but it doesn't necessarily uh, add a huge amount of value. Okay.